Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are going to continue to look at the cooling systems for the pre-built engines and compare the systems and see if there's anything that is better than another option. Currently I believe the game is a little bit broken and I would love the developers to fix the cooling because all my ships are overheating, you gotta run them at 80% as I showed in the last video. But let's see if there are some systems that are better than others in terms of cooling and little hot fixes or something that we can do to make sure that moving forward our ships work properly. So without further ado, let's begin. This first engine here is our baseline. So all it is is simple pipes going to a radiator. This is the exact engine I had on pretty much all of my ships or have on all my ships and currently it is overheating. So my personal belief is that it is a bit of a bug and a theory that was discussed on my Discord server and on my YouTube comments is that it's coming from this new compressed gases update where they actually allowed liquids to be compressible. If you read one of the, the notes on the updates, one of the hotfixes, liquids are now compressible, which brings some issues. So the theory that people are talking about is that because liquid is now compressible and therefore also stretchable, or you can change it, pretty much change its properties, when you're putting it through the radiator system and pumping it in and out of your engine, you end up with a situation where for lack of better terms, your liquid is stretched or diluted or thinned out and instead of having a lot of water or a lot of the coolant flowing through the engine, you're ending up with less liquid than you would have had because of the compression or lack of compression. So it is diluted or stretched or thinned and not able to resist the heat or temperature from the engine as much as it was in the past. So this baseline case here is going to serve as a test and here i did some testing and changes to see exactly what we end up with so on this one all i did is put this fluid pressure sensor we're going to get an idea of the pressures coming out of the engine here and into the engine here so we're going to know what's going out and what's coming into the engine or out of the radiator okay i'm going to put this here so let's say this little arrow is going to serve as the line. So it's just going to show us the flow. Okay. I'm going to make that red very clear for all. Okay. And this is exactly what we use on all of our engines here. So it's identical, copied over, and we're going to compare and understand what is exactly going on. All right. Now that's this case here where I didn't do anything actually so really it should heat up the same way as this one except for a key difference and that key difference is how much more piping it has because it has more piping presumably the liquid is going to be stretched even more okay because these pipes are probably empty and as they prime and as the liquid goes through you're, you're ending up with an effect where you're now stretching that liquid even more and just to confirm that that is happening let's go ahead and add a t-junction here and that t-junction is actually going to tell us we're just going to connect a simple um the flow meter to this as well and it's going to get us an idea of what is happening here in terms of the pressures so we'll put one here and we'll put one here now without the with that much with less piping then this guy here, or the right hand side one, this left one should actually cool better than this one. That's my theory. Okay, now, moving on to the next one. In this case, I actually added something. One of the comments on my YouTube videos suggested to have a pumping from the fr a fresh water pumping in to your system and pressurizing the water or the coolant flowing through your cooling system. So by pressurizing or compressing it, we actually get back to normal or how we were. Now the comment did go and say to use a variable fluid meter or a variable flow meter and uh, a threshold gate for the pressures. I didn't quite understand what was being said, so feel free to comment in more detail here. Uh, maybe it'll something will hit, but regardless, I just wanna see if we could use this pump to pump into the engine and compress pretty much the liquid flowing through here. This case is a little different. 
while it still has the pump pumping in seawater here, we now have a valve and it's just a simple valve that's controlled with an on and off switch. So it's nothing special, but it's now we're now able to control it and turn it on as well as a port that can bleed or leak out our hot coolant. So this line here, remember, is our hot coolant coming out of the engine. I want to see if it's possible. Maybe we need it. Maybe we could put an automated system that enables this or t does this automatically and pretty much flushes the coolant. So the coolant's going to be flushed out here and new coolant or water is brought in through here. I want to see if that does anything. Now on this that's the end of what I've considered my uh, test cases. Now on this side, all I did is add the same type of uh, pressure sensor. This one I'm using the stock engine pumps, so there's no pumps. And on this one, I've actually added the pumps, um, additional, additional pumps to the uh, system, as well as having these pressure sensors. These two I did nothing and they're not even connected to the electricity, so they're not even gonna start but the ones that I am testing are gonna be connected to the electricity and let's go and test them and see what happens. So we're gonna start up the engines here, and give a little bit of throttle. So we're gonna see our RPS goes up a little bit. Let's check the throttle. Yeah, 75%, that's fine. Okay, so if I could just go here and look at the temperatures, they're kind of the same. So this one here, keep in mind, is just our stock case. Now our pressure in and out is kind of fluctuating. You can see here between 40 and 49, and here between, it looks like 34 and 35. This is actually going a little higher. I can see it going to 50 and 45. So these two engines, or the first two here, should be relatively similar, or the same, you can see here. Now, as things start heating up, we may start having engines exploding, but regardless, let's take keep this test going. Now, over here, what I did is the same thing, except now I have the pump. So, our in is the same. Our out is the same. Now, if I turn this on, I'm pretty much pumping water, except you can see here that nothing is going through this pump or through this flow valve. So really, engines two and three should be the same, so they are. Now these ones here are overheating, and the ones that are overheating actually, funny enough, is the one that doesn't that just has the engine pumping and not the fluid. So this is actually doing something. We're getting a higher pressure, you can see here. And this side has a much higher pressure. So this one here is 16 degrees, whereas this one's 100. Wow. So this one here with the pumps at this low temperature is actually doing very well. 16 degrees. This one's going to catch on fire soon. And their only difference, the only difference is that this one has pumps. If I check back on this, you can see these two are overheating the most. Now let's try the system. So let's pump. Let's turn on the inlet, and let's also bleed something out. So we're now bleeding it out. So our temperature should be dropping, but instead it's rising. Now if I shut that valve, you can see here we actually dropped the temperature of the coolant, but not of the engine. So our temperature of our radiator is dropping, which is excellent. Our engine temperature is still climbing, so that system did not actually help. So even if I turn all these off, you can see it's too late. This engine's hot. So let's try again. We'll turn this on. So we've released a bunch of the uh, water, and now we've closed the valve, and now we're just pumping in here. So here we, sh we are reducing the temperature, and here it's still climbing. Let's check over here. So these two are still the hottest. Now nothing is overheating or cooking just yet. This one's at a steady 91. And this is the exact same. This is the exact same. So this pump has not added anything to our system. 
but we could see that the temperatures are identical. Over here, like I said, we're hotter, and I mean, even though our radiator temperature has dropped significantly, I mean, these ones here are all 56, this one's super low, but it doesn't even matter. So the radiator temperature did not actually cool off the engine. So what my theory here is that that's just the temperature of the radiator itself. Obviously the coolant flowing through it is di a different temperature. So it's not actually changing here. Now remember this one has our pressures. So we have 1.5 or 1.6 and 0.5 whereas here we're both at almost the same 1.5 which is actually interesting, very interesting. Okay, so it seems that we're kind of steady here. This one is increasing a little bit, but this is more or less steady. So we're gonna check something else. But before I do that, I just wanna note that it's fi I find it really interesting that the pressure here is so low. We're at 1.7 here, and we're at 1.6 here. Whereas these ones are fluctuating and jumping between like 40 and you know 30 and stuff. So these ones are much, much higher. Now, granted, the seawater is cool, or very cold, so that is obviously something to consider as well. But these radiators are really struggling. They're really struggling, because at, at less than 80% load, these, these engines are getting up to temperatures where they got to previously at 100% load. Because I had this exact same setup, and it wouldn't really breach 100 degrees. On this part of the test, what I want to do is take a look at the variable flow valve and how adjusting it may change either the pressure or the flow rate and kind of get a feeling for what happens there. We're only going to be running these two engines here, our base case to the left and this case here to the right that has the flow uh, variable flow valve. So we've given them 78% throttle. And this one here is working, as you can see here. And this one here is not working because these are closed right now. So right now, nothing is going through the radiator. So this engine should be heating up much faster than this one. Technically, oh, almost. This one's still lagging. So this has really, really made this quite poor. Anyway, what, it, what I do now is I can open up this throttle. And you can see here that now we have stuff flowing through. Granted very slowly. So as I set these throttles here, we're changing the flow rate and changing the pressure in the radiator. So we may be able to stabilize that pressure somewhere and see what is the best for the engine. But right now, what if we do set the less comes in than what goes out? So then we're getting an atmospheric pressure of around 27 atmospheres. Now the engine's already over 100 and this one's at 92. So this one's he overheating already. Now if we open it wide up like this, that's pretty much the same as what this one has. And you can see it's dropping the temperature a little bit, which is nice. So that's kind of the base case that we're now recreating in essence. Though this one has heated up significantly more, so it's going to take some time to cool off. But, let's say we reduce this. So we can actually see the temperature is still dropping a little bit. Now, that would imply that less comes into the radiator. Now, I want more in the radiator, and I almost want to slow down what leaves the radiator, is almost what I'm thinking. Because that would actually mean that the liquid spends more time in the radiator cooling off. If we just slow both down a little bit so we can control the pressure, you can see it's still jumping like crazy. So really when we had the lower pre lower atmospheric pressure was when we did this. You can see we're at around 27 or so now. Granted, the comment on my YouTube was actually talking about the heat transfers. I believe it's this thing, the heat sink or heat exchanger. Whereas now we're just trying to make these radiators work. And they're not really working right. So we've dropped the atmospheric, the pressure, but you can see that it's still heating up now. 
so playing with this is still I mean look at that so the temperature is dropping which is nice this one's still steady 95 or 95 so playing with these flows does not fix our problem in terms of the uh, what's going on with with the radiators I was hoping that we'd be able to slow down the flow out of the radiator and it wouldn't be thinning it or stretching it out now maybe we need to slow down slow it down here potentially because what's happening is maybe the pressure of the um, the engine or the coolant flowing through the engine isn't cooling it off enough so if we slow down how much or how fast it comes out of the engine so this flow meter is always going to be that because it's upstream of this variable flow rate controller so you can see here we're at like 8 and 10 and on this side here we're jumping between 1 and 20 so it that one is kind of flying as this one's trying to catch up but regardless at this sort of interval rate you could see that it's still causing the engine to heat up like it's bouncing out at 106 so it's not really doing its thing which leads me again to conclude that th this ra the radiators are just affected poorly by this update and they're no longer working properly which is very unfortunate I did release my ship and I've given the advice that everyone has to drive at 80 percent because this does not work so obviously these liquid liquid heat exchangers and more intricate systems are still applicable and may still work granted I don't quite know last test I did they still had issues maybe as the person in my comments said that they're better but I also don't really want a super intricate system again unless that's what these developers are sort of really gunning for us to do if the developers want us to have more intricate systems and are wanting to make the radiators ineffective I would love to hear that and know for a fact but as far as I'm concerned I'm still hoping and waiting for a hotfix that can make this system work properly because here we go if we turn the throttle up to 100 we're just going to end up overheating and catching fire no matter what so either these engines are no longer meant to be driven at 100% throttle with call it a stock heating or cooling system stock meaning it's just a simple radiator maybe the game the developers need us to make more intricate cooling systems in order for for us to utilize 100% throttle so it could very well be this if that's the case I will for sure have to look into <laughs> I will have to look into systems that I could make my ships faster because I do want to utilize 100% of that throttle but if, if not, then it is what it is. We're going to adapt and develop as we always have been. So that sort of concludes this video. We've taken a look at radiators and systems of radiators. I would say between these tests here, we found that you can't add liquid to a radiator setup. So adding it and compressing that liquid does not work. You can decrease the temperature of the radiator, which is interesting. But that does not affect the temperature of the engine, which I actually found very surprising. I would have expected if we dropped this radiator down to 20, whereas the one next to us is at 50, this should have had a significant impact on the engine and should have cooled it down. So then I would have just said, okay, sure, I'm going to add some sort of bleeding system and pretty much get it myself new coolant every once in a while and I'd be off to the races. So that's a pretty easy fix in my opinion, but it did not work. Um, flow rate efficiency did not really change things. So we decreased the flow rate here, and I would say it made it worse in the case of the radiator. It did not actually improve what we were doing and also creating sort of a backlog of pressure or flow in the engine didn't help us and creating a backlog of flow or pressure through the radiator didn't really help us as well. So I'm and that also changed the uh, pressure so it was the pressure and the flow rate was changed in this setup and it didn't really do anything um, so while it is sort of a failed experiment in a sense that we didn't find the best case scenario I wouldn't say it's a failed experiment or test because regardless we ended up with 
with results. Results are good. Results tell us what to do and what not to do. So in this case, we now know more or less what not to do and what doesn't actually fix or change our engines. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments what you think, what other tests we can do. I will look into other tests with the fluid to fluid exchanger and all that other stuff. But for this one, I just wanted to take a look at the radiators specifically and see if there's a simple fix to get our radiators working back how they were and make our ships more or less uh, efficient again. But regardless, we got some results and thank you all for watching. Thank you for all the comments, the likes, the feedback, the people on my Discord server. Shout out to them, shout out to the moderators. And as always, happy stormworksing everyone. For those of you had, that have made it this far, I do have a little surprise content or bonus content for you. So you can see here that I've taken the alt tanker and I've made some modifications. Not only is it an OMA ship, but as people were guessing on my Discord server and as I was alluding to there, I made or I'm starting, this is not where the final buttons are going to be, I'm starting to make a ship that actually folds open and not only that has railings so you can be safe and it folds open and is an oil spill collection ship it handles surprisingly well in this mode but of course we've increased the beam we've increased the stability it looks like a bit of a starfish or like a mercedes logo or something it's kind of like a peace sign but it handles well and the idea is that it is going to be able to collect spilled oil. So as you can see here, we're giving it power and we're now moving and all that oil can be collected. It can kind of turn on a dime because it has all these side propellers. So it's quite interesting. And one other thing is that in addition to collecting oil, stay tuned for this, it may have additional capabilities regarding processing oil so we'll see if any of that pans out but regardless a little bit of bonus content for all of you that stayed tuned till the end of the video and again thank you to all my fans happy stormworksing everyone